Senate passes 876 billion Naira NDDC 2023 budget as 12 board members and aides get 451 million Naira entitlement for the year. And uh, the Nigerian Correctional Service says there are 75,436 inmates in prisons and 52,000 uh, of those are awaiting trial. Tonight we're discussing incarcerations and the delays in prosecutions in Nigeria. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. The 876 billion Naira 2023 budget for the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, has been passed by the Nigerian Senate on Tuesday after a thorough debate that tends to bring out the impact of the commission on the people of the Niger Delta region in the past 10 years. Now, out of the humongous amount passed, aides to 12 board members of the commission are to get the amount of 400 or the sum of 451 million naira as their entitlement for the year while uh, 576 million naira was earmarked for the running of the office of the chairman of the commission loretta Nochi. the breakdown of the office uh, for the chairman showed that the personnel cost will go up about 156 million naira overhead uh, minus 312 million naira and internal capital of minus 108 million naira. Now, the Corporate Affairs Department of the Commission also will get 1.61 billion naira from the votes, out of which 431.76 million naira is for personnel cost, 845.566 million naira is for overhead, 63.081 million is for internal audit. Joining us to talk about this and break it down is uh, Upunabo Inko Tari, a public affairs analyst. Mr. Tari, so good to have you join us. Good evening. Oh, I think you're muted. I'm unable to hear you. I think that you're muted, so I can't hear you. Oh, yeah, perfect. We can hear you now. Me. Yes, yes. Welcome. Great. Good evening, Mary. Good evening, Nigeria. Yes, thank you for joining us. Um, this is a very interesting um, breakdown, as as you have seen me uh, painstakingly, you know, um, spell out how these monies have been broken down uh, and for what use it would be. Uh, but then the NDDC does have a lot of issues hanging around its neck, and here we are at the tail end of a government. Um, at actually putting aside this amount of monies uh, for the NDDC when they've not been able to account for all the other monies that have been given to them in the past eight years? Yes, Maria, that is the conundrum. Uh, one begins to wonder the reasonableness in the relief of these monies to NDDC when uh, the past uh, leadership of the Commission I've been able to, I've not been able to account for uh, monies already given to them. And the, it's quite irrisome that uh, uh, when we have the staggering amount that is being released, NDDC, as far as I'm concerned, it's a duplication of the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. I keep saying it, especially when the issue of Niger, the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs that I did, I said to start with, this is completely unnecessary. Because the whole essence of NDDC was to address the nagging problems of the Niger Delta with a view to palliating the asperity associated with oil exploration and exploitation occasioned by the militants in the Niger Delta. Let me also use this opportunity to correct an impression. Militancy does not commit, connote negativity. It's just the fight for the change of uh, social change, fight for social justice. A lot of people believe that when they say you're a militant, it means you're a criminal, you're a bandit. No, that's not the case. That's a misconception of the word militancy. Okay. So it was meant to address the Niger Delta problem because of the uh, nauseous air we hear. The days of all that are in the Niger Delta as a result of exploration and exploitation activities by the federal government. And when the Niger Deltans reacted and said enough is enough, so much was spirited out of the system, the region, 
with little or nothing to show for it. That was why the issue of uh, NDBC came up. So you don't really need a Niger Delta means because it's just duplication. Now, I'll just give you the background. It's just duplication of office. What they would have done was to empower the NDBC to do the work it was meant to do, it was set up to do. But you see, because the government, the Nigerian government, not just the Guarantee government, the government believes in what I'll call a Fabian policy. You know, let us just uh, deceive them, set up this commission, but we will still be in charge. And so what we saw in the past was people from the Niger Delta being appointed as MDs and executive directors and so on, while they actually take instructions from the center. They are actually not doing the free hand. Whenever a president wants anything done, what they do, they go to the Niger Delta ministry. Even if what ought to be done or what they want done is done in the north, they go to the Niger Delta ministry. And so they pump in this money because it's a country pipe. Hmm. Now, remember the of the mic saga. Remember the um, disclosure of a, man, a senator from Delta State who got how many contracts? <laughs> Some ridiculous number. With money you are giving to him, and he did nothing with them. I'm talking of investigations and disclosures, mm -hmm. and nothing by the same person. I said, I'm not no, there are no, no, no proof to show that such contracts were awarded and such money you are giving. And not when I say proof, I'm not talking of, I'm talking of there is nothing to justify the amount released to him. And just one man with how many contracts? Well, about 20 something or 30 something contracts. One man, a senator. Now, you after that, you remember the issue of this uh, former MD who allegedly, purportedly collapsed on the floor of the National Assembly. Well, that's, that's a big question. Everyone is still asking questions. where Professor Ponde is, even though he was put it out by Mr. Ponde. President. But where and, is he? And, and that was the end. And yes, because if he has a, you confirm the issue of, of the mic, of the mic. Because if he has to squeal, a lot of people will, a lot of heads will roll. And so that was the smartest way to them, because to us it was quite ridiculous. That was the smartest way to roll out of that uh, uh, mess, to pretend. And that was the end of it. We never had anything, which is normal in Nigeria. Once you're well connected, you have the reach, you have the cloud. And the masses investigate and try to unearth whatever wrong you, whatever inequity you have committed. What the, uh, uh, the authorities do is they set up an investigation panel and that will be the end of it. We, have, we saw that with Magu and many others. So I will tell you that most times these monies are released because the senators or the National Assembly most times reach this compromise with certain persons to ensure that when the monies are released, they also partake in the logic. That's what they do. They partake in it. Go around the Federation. You will see NDC signboards. Most of them were still and so on. They just they tell you they want to do a road. And in most cases, not to be time rules. They do these concrete groups. Or they tell you they want to set up a building. And 90% of the time, these things are abandoned, turn out to be abandoned projects. Mm. They don't ever complete those projects. If you see an NDC project that is completed, the ND has a special interest in it. But 90%. So you find out that the NDC has become the cesspool of corruption. It has become the country part. During the elections, they release money to NDC. So that the NDC will be the bypass. And they will now say it is meant for one particular project, but it gets into the pocket of a particular politician. Hmm. He won the election for that year. These are the kind of fraud we find in NDBC. I, I, and one begins to wonder, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't have bothered. Because no matter the time of the year, if it is due, the NDBC, you must release it. It doesn't matter. Hmm. So even if the money that released, a day to Guarys exit, I wouldn't have bothered. If this money were judiciously used. But that is always not the case. This is like a party like this, a party gift. And I tell you that of the, of the 876 billion naira allegedly released to the commission, maybe 
20 to 30 percent, if not 40 percent of it, will be only get to the commission. The rest will be shared mm. amongst legislators and so many other persons. That is exactly what is going to happen. And the legislators are also leaving. So they are in a hurry to ensure that they get their own share. That is why they hurry to release the, the money so that they will get their own share. Because most of them know that once they are out of office, that is the end of it. The NBDC, the commission will deal with the new president of the Senate, the new speaker of the, Senate, of the House of Reps and so And that must have been one of the reasons for the rush. Mm -hmm. say, let us read this. But they have got about two weeks or more, to, to barely two weeks to, to, to stay in office. Let me go back to some of the things that you mentioned um, in your response. Uh, you talked about the fact that, um, um, you know, they, they, they need to be m empowered. Um, I'm considering that if billions and billions are being, you know, sunk into a place like the NDDC, I will, I will still talk about, you know, the Niger Delta Commission, um, sorry, the Niger Delta Ministry, but let's stay with the NDDC. If such amount of monies are being voted to the NDDC, what more empowerment are you talking about? How, em how more empowered would they want to be? They, they are obviously a, de a department or an agency of government who's been given a mandate. So what kind of empowerment or motivation, again, are they needing if they have these much monies um, you know, in their coffers? That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, that's because you said they need to be more empowered, and I'm wondering, they have so much money. No, I didn't say we need to be more empowered. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Yeah, you did. You I said you said you said you, you said you what they needed to be empowered, and I'm thinking as a commission, especially in Nigeria, yeah, you talk about the empowerment. Empower. Yes, yes, you did talk about more empowerment, but then at let's point? but then let's talk about. No, at what point did I say that? Yes, no, you did, but, but that's that fine. I wrote it down. Yeah, you also talked that's about. You probably be here, so it's not a I wrote it down, but let's not argue about it. I wrote it down. I wanted to come back to you because I didn't understand what you meant. essence was to palliate the asperities of oil exploration and exploitation. But that is not the case. That's what I said. Yeah, but let's let's talk about, you know, when you say that all of these monies are being put into the, the, the commission and, you know, it ends up in the pockets of people, like we've seen, um, it's also... Um, how do we call it? It's more like a, a competition of sorts. Who sits at the helm of affairs uh, at the NDDC? And thank goodness you've spoken about Professor Ponde. Even though he was booted out, we still haven't heard the last of that case. Should we be thinking about the scrapping of the NDDC at this point? If so much money is keep going into the NDDC, and like you said, we only see signposts. We've not seen any developmental projects any that has been followed to the latter. I mean, I, I, mean I, I would love for somebody to prove us wrong. Why do we still need it around if we still have the Niger Delta Ministry, which also is saddled with the responsibility of dealing with the problems in the Niger Delta? Why do we still need the NDDC? Shouldn't there be a push of sorts uh, for it to be scrapped? Or could it be that the people of the Niger Delta also somewhat have their hands in the cookie jar, aside from the politicians that you have made mention of today? I just told you, it's a Indian policy. The whole, as a, as it was a lofty idea, no doubt about it. Because, like I said, it was supposed to address the burning and nagging issue in the Niger Delta as a result of the rest of it. But then, it's a federal policy because it was set up ostensibly to address those issues, while in actual fact, it was not addressing the issues. And even the presidency cannot have denoted itself because NBC is directly under the president. So the president ought to monitor the amount they receive and how those monies are being spent. It is the president's responsibility, or the president, the president is in charge of the president. But they fail. And in most cases, it's even where they don't know not that they fail to do the money. What really happens is that they use that to settle crimes. That's what most presidents do, the president is to settle crimes. Now, the issue of the nature of Niger Delta, when it was set up, I remember the sister's picture. I condemned it, I criticized it. I said, the nature of Niger Delta is completely unnecessary. Maybe when you talk of empowerment, you're, you're okay, maybe that was where I said, I said, all you need is to empower the agency with this job. Maybe that was where I talked yes, about that's, empowerment. That's what you said. To empower the agency. Uh, uh, so when I mean empower, give them the free hand and monitor them. They are not, I'm not going to give them money. That's what I, that's what I mean. Give them the free hand. Mm. 
and monitor them to ensure and in the absence the of them is, and in the absence of them doing this because you see if the people of the Niger Delta are not feeling take for example at, at some point the Kalabai to um, expressway was an eyesore it's always been an eyesore since after the Donald Duke administration and the NDC, NDC at, the, at that time, I think, led by Ibim Seminitari, had gone there to say, oh, we're going to fix this spot. Uh, as we speak, that spot is still there. So again, if these people have not in any way been able to do anything or follow through to, to the latter, should the people of the Niger Delta not be up in arms, pushing that the NDDC be scrapped, or at least pushing for them to do their jobs, instead of it just being, like you said, the, the, the people of the Niger Delta did that. And now that we to the NDDC, the formation of the NDDC. Now, when we talk of the NDDC budget, we said the British of Natal went there and made a promise that never, to never fulfill. Probably she just made that promise in order to ingratiate herself with the Niger Delta, being a Niger Delta, a core Niger Delta. Or, probably she meant it, but the powers that be said, my friend, what are you doing? Because for you to even be this, this uh, MP of NDDC, I must tell you, you must have, the NDDC is like a substructure under a superstructure. Somebody nominated you, somebody influenced your appointment, it's not necessarily based on merit. Somebody influenced the appointment, and that person is expecting feedbacks. Feedbacks in terms of money, feedbacks in terms of uh, 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 contracts, feedbacks in terms of favors, for their own other credits. For example, I've just given a hypothetical example. You remember of Party B, okay, APC, let me put it that way. I know a minister influenced your appointment as end of NDBC. The minister expects you to service certain politicians, expects you to also service the, uh, his ambition, if he has an ambition, or the ambition of his party in the state. Mm. So you probably went in with the mindset to say, okay, I'm going to work. Now, a note comes from the minister to tell you, my friend, you say, how much? I know how much they give to you. In fact, I influence the amount. I want you to give Mr. A this. Inflate the contract. This is going to be one billion, maybe two billion, because I want to take care of his area for his constituency. I also want you to leave this other road you are talking about. Construct the one to my house. Look, there are so many variables. So even when you have the good intention, you find out that your hands are tied, your hands are fettered mm. by the superstructure. So these are some of the problems. Then when this happens, the MD2 will sit back and say, ah, what part of me now? I cannot bring the water and soap will enter my eye. Let me also do an to also get my own share of the money, the national team. Mm. And at the end of the run, nothing is left for you to do your job. Mm. So these are some of the bottlenecks mm. that most of them will not even explain to you. But that is the fact. Then you have the known former Niger Delta militants. Those ones are also being taken care of by the NDC to prevent a rehash of the militancy. The 2020, 2000, and 2003, and so on. So, what you do now is to also appease them. You give them contracts, and they will also not execute the contract because they know that there's nothing you can do. And your hands are soiled. You who go to the go with three hands. Your hands are also soiled. So, you keep quiet. And the way you say, okay, you can construct this road to your local government. This is uh, one billion. If the road is actually 600 million, they say, put one billion. You're giving me 200 million. And uh, uh, you also take 200 million. The man goes with the 800 million. He knows that nothing will come out of it in a society like Nigeria. And he does nothing. He is in charge of the militants. Hmm. And this was what led to groups. Groups started because they realized that, I'm talking about the militants now, that their bosses, their guys, were making a lot of money. And as a result of that, they started breaking the way. Mm. And that's why when this whole thing started in Niger Delta, he probably had one or two as head or heads of militants. Mm. But in, when they realized how much their bosses were making, they started breaking away, forming their own groups. And in the process, we now had over 100 militants fighting for, ostensibly fighting for one court, whereas they were actually fighting for their pockets. Let's look at um, the, because I mean, from all of the things that you've said, 
this is an ongoing corruption that's been, you know, holding sway in the Niger Delta Commission, and it's not just under the Buhari administration. Hey. But then, of exactly. course, exactly. but of course, the, the Buhari administration obviously is under a spotlight because this is the administration that promised us that they were going to put an end to corruption, plug all these loopholes. But there seems to remain that status quo. Do we ever see this breaking with a crop of people who are coming in? Um, uh, the government that is going to be sworn in May 29, the guys who are going to be leading the National Assembly, um, the APC being, at the, the, being the majority in both the upper and the lower house, and guess who? Um, the party, who's all, who the party is also saying, this is who we're standing by um, as our Senate president, and this is who we want to be our speaker, knowing that Gospel Akwabi was at one point heading the NDDC. Do you see this coming to an end anytime soon, or are we just going to continue in this endless conundrum? It's going to be a pretty illusion to think that corruption in the NDDC and of corruption is in sight. First and foremost, I asked the question rhetorically anyway, if a Leopard changes his spot, when they force on a Leopard, does it change his spot? Does it wipe his spot? Says, no. We learn how to use left hand in old days. No. My dear, even with the president elect, look at the baggage of the president elect. He is also a mess with corruption at the district. And on one occasion, has been convicted in the United States because he was going to pay $470,000. So that is conviction. He has been convicted. Then look at uh, what's his name again, Akabi. Off the mic, off the mic. Why off the mic? Because he's scared that if they continue with the proceedings, he will be imputed. He was the MD, he was the minister for Niger Delta Affairs. The MD was under him. And if the MD is corrupt, he's corrupt. Because he did not squeal. He was not the one that told the world that this is the corruption going on in the in the commission. It was an investigation carried on by the National Assembly. So even if he did not steal, as Zuno Uta conceded, that he, he actually did not steal, he concealed it, which is aiding and abetting. So he's as guilty as the man that stole. Mm. So if that is a fact. So with such a man, how do you expect the Senate? In fact, the issue of the corruption in the Niger Delta Media Commission will be completely swept under the carpet if it becomes a senior president. Then, as for what is his name, the president elect, if he becomes the president of the country, I have my doubts, I've said it on several occasions, that if we have 50% of corruption under Buari, I expect 80 to 90%. Really? Why do you. Because when you look at. He, I, talk, I just gave you this in the five minutes. <laughs> I told you. Well, I, I told you he was convicted in the United States. It's but, a but, but that's the that, to pay for that. But I'm about to be sincere. That's detail for so many people who we call our political leaders in this country. So many of them who that's have even failed the president, Mr. President's cabinet. So what makes this different? My man, just don't worry. And that's what I'm saying. Or in his own case, he has been convicted. He paid, but that's a penalty. Even if you're convicted and you're on parole, you have been convicted. That you're convicted does not mean you must be in jail. You can be convicted, it could be suspended sentence. But the issue is you've been convicted. Even if you're on parole, you've been convicted. You must not be jailed. You must not be incarcerated in a particular area. Now, the point I'm trying to make is, you see, when you want to judge somebody, you go, you dig into his antecedents and what you see of him at that moment. That is how you judge someone. Until the person proves otherwise, then you can say, okay, he has adjured the things. Until that person goes on. But till then, you still have that perception. If, for example, you see a thief, and no matter what he says to you, as he's walking into your house, you're jittery. Because his record shows that he's a thief. If you see, a murderer, the same thing, you, you say, I agree, you have repented of your sins. But even at that, this is your room. This is my room. Mm. And when you're sleeping, you lock your door. Mm. It is natural. So until we see, 
I have my doubts that there will be transparency in the next in, uh, administration under Bola I have my doubts. Mm. So he has to prove himself. He has to prove himself. But then, the only way the issue of NDDC can be addressed, if even if you have a man with rectitude, a man who believes that uh, under Buari, it is not as if Buari himself is a thief. But we blame him because the box starts at his table. And Buari is aware of most of the things that are going on, but pretended not to know. He cannot exonerate himself as well because the ball stops at his table. Mm. If the government is good, he takes the blame. If the government is the, the credit, if it's bad, he takes the blame. Okay. So, right. in the forthcoming administration, the uh, that the board of Latin America that was one in the I don't have confidence. Okay. That the issue of corruption will be reduced drastically. Okay. Because right. I also don't have faith in Bola Metinibu. Okay. And I'm right. faith in it. All right. Well, uh, what happens after May 29 remains to be seen. I want to say thank you. Ponaboyin Kotara is a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. All right. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be talking about incarcerations and persons waiting or awaiting trial and why we have so much congestion in Nigerian prisons. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>